All right, I did do a video successfully integrating the Unify Protect system with Apple HomeKit with secure video support. However, after some researching on the integration, some online users said HomeBridge was slow but reliable and others said scripted was fast and was unreliable. So in this video, let's set up the Unify Protect system using scripted and then I'll show you which platform is the one for you. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along and to get some good karma. Now, this video is not about pitching the plugins against each other. It's more about personal preferences. And besides, the Unify system doesn't have any real HomeKit support. So for me, kudos to both platforms to give us that HomeKit support where there is none. Now, the good news is that both plugins supports two-way audio, ring support on your Apple TVs or HomePods, and most importantly, HomeKit secured video. So for all this to work with Apple HomeKit and the plugins, we will need obviously the Unify Protect system. In my case, I'll be using a UDM Pro, a G4 doorbell, a G3 Flex and a G3 Instant. You will also need scripted running on your network. So in my case, I'll be using a Docker container installed in a Synology NAS. And don't worry, finally, we have installation videos that I have left links in the description. Well, I'll be honest with you, configuring the scripted plugin is straightforward, easy and simple, which is the same as Homebridge. However, before we go and see the plugin differences and say which one is the one for you, first, we need to get the best out of the plugin. So let's first go through the best practices. Number one, for an optimal performance and responsiveness of the plugin, you must run the cameras as standalone accessory. Two, create a Unify Protect local user account for scripted and provide an administrative role. Now, the administrative role in Unify Protect allows the user to be able to change individual camera settings, create live views, and do a handful of other camera things. Three, configure motion zones in the Protect app or web UI. It's the best place to do so. Put the time into setting up and adjusting motion zones in Unify Protect, particularly with the enhanced motion detection algorithms so that Protect only alerts when something of real interest happens for you. Last but not the least, Enable notifications on all your Protect cameras in HomeKit. Now, enabling notifications on all your cameras will ensure that iOS is alerted to when motion occurs and crucially updates the snapshots of the cameras in the background. Now, with the best practices out of the way, let's go and configure the scripted Unify plugin. All right, before we go and configure the scripted plugin, we need to go and first create a local user account within the Unify Protect system. So let's go ahead and access the Unify login page and we're going to go and select users. And what you want to go ahead and do now is create a new user. So we're going to select on administrator, local access only, we give it a name. So that is the local username and the password. So you want to make sure there's a capital as well as a number used in the password. So that's the information you want to give it a first name and pass and last name as well. That being said, you want to go ahead and click on add and that's about it. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and access the scripted dashboard and you want to go and click on install and look for Unify. Click on install. Now let's go ahead and populate the username and password that we just created and the IP address of your uh, UDM Pro. You want to click on the green icon, then go ahead and put the password. And lastly, you want to go ahead and put in the IP address. Now, if you had multiple controllers, you would have to go ahead and type in the word migrate to create multiple controllers. But in my case, it's only one. So now you see over here, it's already detect my doorbell, the G3 Flex as well as my G3 Instinct. So what I'm going to do ahead now is go ahead and click on doorbell. And what I want to do right now is go ahead first and enable integrations and extensions, enable the pan diff motion detection, snapshot plugin and HomeKit too. I will go ahead and enable the same settings for the other two cameras as well. 
and it's that simple so for every camera device i went and enabled the home kit the snapshot the motion detection and then you want to go back again because it gives you the option to enable the home kit secure video local copy so you want to enable all these options now besides this my recommendation is not to tweak any other setting because you want to leave it as it is and that's how the developer intended it to be so once this is all configured the next one we want to go do is within home kit pairing as part of the best practice you want to enable standalone accessory so i will go ahead and enable this for all of the other two devices now once you've enabled all of these options we need to go back to plugin and we need to click on the home kit plugin and all we have to do now is click on reload plugin let's go back to plugins again and you want to click on unify protect now when you go to each of the cameras and click on home kit pairing you will see a QR code being generated. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add in all of these cameras into my home. So I'm going to open up the Apple Home app. So I've already migrated to one of my devices using uh, to iOS 16. So I'm going to tap on the plus sign, add accessory, and I'm just going to scan the QR code. Add to Apple Home, add anyway. You want to give it a location and you'll see that it's enabled the HomeKit secure video for these cam. No automations. Now I'm going to quickly do the same for the other two cameras. So right now we have all of the devices in Apple Home. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go on to the camera settings. I'm going to go to status and notifications and I'm just going to make sure all of the notifications are enabled and I'm just go ahead and test it now. So we have it working. So the doorbell is right now working within the Apple ecosystem. So the it uh, rang the chime in the HomePod Mini. I've got the notifications on my phone as well as on my MacBook Pro over here. Now, with that being said, if I open up the Apple Home app, we can see all of the cameras within the Home app. That's the easiest way of setting up the, all of these cameras within the HomeKit ecosystem and within Scripted. Now, what are the key differences between the HomeBridge plugin and scripted. So the first key difference is the multi doorbell message support. So if I go to Homebridge, go to the plugin section and select the plugin, I have the option of adding in multiple doorbell, doorbell message presets. So you have this option within Homebridge. If you're using scripted, you do not get this option. So if you're using the doorbell and if you're looking for this option, you will not get it with the scripted plugin. You can only test the message. Homebridge gives you that opportunity to create doorbell messages which appears as a switch. You can run automation and display that message based on any proximity to the doorbell. The next one is uh, MQTT. So if you're looking to add in MQTT settings and take your smart home automation to the next level, the Homebridge plugin allows you to do so. Scripted does not give you that option. The next one, if you want to uh, add in any optional settings based on the NVR, you get that in Homebridge. Scripted, you don't get that option. The next one is if you're looking to do tweak any settings for any of the cameras within the plugin, the Unify Protect plugin doesn't give you that. Within Scripted, you can go and configure and tweak each of the camera's uh, stream settings at a granular level. So that's all of the control that Scripted gives you. Now, the obvious question, how fast does it load? I did try uh, testing both these plugins around my home and it was difficult to measure it against time. So how many seconds would it take? It was difficult to accurately say that Homebridge would take one or two seconds, Scripted would take uh, less than a second. So it was difficult. So the way I measured, uh, the way it loaded the snapshots within the Home app is uh, something very uh, crazy. I used the number of times I blinked my eyes to get the snapshot. So this is my personal opinion and this is one of the personal preferences. The Scripted loaded the snapshots between uh, one or two blinks of an eye. Homebridge took between three to four blinks of an eye. So it all depends how fast you blink an eye and it could this could be not the best way of measuring it. But that's the only difference, be it on my Wi-Fi network or uh, using um, the 4G or LTE. So that's the only difference. Now, which one is for you? In my humble opinion, if you're using the G4 doorbell, you're looking to add multiple doorbell messages, run those automations, MQTT control, you want to control the NVR settings. 
it's the Homebridge plugin. Scripted, if you're using purely the camera ecosystem of uh, Unif Unify, so that could be the G3, the G4, uh, the DOMS, name those models, scripted is the way to go. And if you're really insistent to get those quick snapshots provided for both platforms, you enable those best practices we spoke about. So just like that, we now know which plugin is for you. In my case, I will be using Homebridge because I need the multiple Doboil message support and I'm happy for the snapshots to load between three or four blinks of an eye. And um, that's about which one is for you and let me know in the comment section which plugin you're using and the obvious reason why and uh, so that it also helps other users to make the right choice. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers and happy automation.